Z-Wave is a wireless home automation technology that lets your smart devices communicate with a smart hub or smart home system. I've only recently started using Z-Wave in my smart home, and I use it in conjunction with a USB Z-Wave dongle and home assistant. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a system called Z-Wave JS, and how to get it working with your own home assistant installation. I'll take you through both the add-on installation method for those of you running Home Assistant OS, and the Docker container installation method if you're running Home Assistant container. If you're not familiar with Z-Wave, or you just want to find out a bit more information about it, then you should first check out the last video I made, which explains what Z-Wave is, and how it works in a lot more detail. You can then come back here, and I'll show you how to get it up and running with Home Assistant, add a few Z-Wave devices, and create a simple automation. Let's take a look. Before you get started, you'll need to buy a Z-Wave dongle that is compatible with Z-Wave JS and Home Assistant. I bought this Silicon Lab 700 series controller online, but the Home Assistant documentation lists a whole bunch of alternatives that have been tested as working. The documentation also has a whole lot of information about Z-Wave controllers, so take a look at it before you buy one, or if you run into any problems with it. I've linked to it in the description below. Once you've bought your USB stick, you should plug it into an available port on the Raspberry Pi or whatever device you're running Home Assistant on. And now we can get started with installing and configuring all the software required to make this work. There are essentially two parts you'll need to install and configure. The first part is the Z-Wave JS application itself. This can be installed as either a Home Assistant add-on, or you can run it as a separate Docker container. If you've been following my channel for a while, then you may have seen the previous videos I made about using Home Assistant and Docker, and you'll be familiar with my setup. If you're new here, and if you're interested in learning more about that, then check out the playlist I've linked in the description below, which has all of my Home Assistant Docker videos in it. I'm first going to show you how to install the Z-Wave JS add-on, which is the easiest way to get started if you're using the Home Assistant operating system. To install the add-on, you should first go to the Home Assistant settings page, go to the add-on section, and then to the add-on store. From here, you can select the Z-Wave JS add-on and click the install link. It'll probably take a while to install. But once it's done, you can go into the configuration page of the add-on, and you'll hopefully see that it's detected your USB Z-Wave stick. Select that USB stick, and then save the configuration. You can now go back to the Info tab, and I'd recommend telling the add-on to automatically apply any updates, and then you can start the add-on. I'd suggest doing a quick check of the log files now to see if anything's gone wrong. And if it hasn't, you can go back to the configuration tab to see that it's automatically created any new network and security keys for you. Now we need to install the second part of this setup, which is the Home Assistant Z-Wave integration. The integration is the interface between the add-on and Home Assistant itself. It's basically the thing that lets Home Assistant talk to the Z-Wave JS application and add your devices. To install the integration, go back to the settings page, to the integrations area, and add a new integration. Search for Z-Wave JS and click on it to add it. It should automatically detect that the add-on is installed, and have ticked a box for you telling you that it's going to use the Z-Wave JS add-on it found. Click Finish and it should be installed. If you click on the Configure button on the Z-Wave JS integration, you should see more information, including some statistics about the USB stick itself, and access to the Z-Wave logs which can help you troubleshoot any Z-Wave network problems in the future. That's it. You're now set up to start adding Z-Wave devices to your Home Assistant. Pretty easy, huh? If you're running Home Assistant container, it's a little bit more complicated. You'll need to add a new Docker container that's running a system called Z-Wave JS to MQTT. I usually install new Docker containers using Docker Compose, and I've previously explained all of this in the playlist I mentioned earlier. You can find an example Docker Compose entry on the Z-Wave JS documentation website, under the Docker heading. I've linked to this in the description as well. Now copy out the section that configures the Z-Wave JS to MQTT container itself. I don't bother with all the network or volume stuff because I don't really need that in my home. Copy out the sample and paste it into your own Docker Compose file. Here you can see my Compose file running in VS Code. This is probably the most technical part of the whole installation. To help you out if you want to do this in your own smart home, I've written a blog post that shows you my Docker Compose entry for Z-Wave JS to MQTT. This means you don't need to pause the video and try and copy text off the screen. I put a link to the post in the description below. Once you've pasted the sample into your Docker Compose file, you'll need to set the session secret to some random set of words or characters, and then go and delete the network key. I'm going to use my default Docker network for this, so I won't be needing it. You'll then need to map the Z-Wave USB dongle through to the Docker container so that Z-Wave JS can access it. 
This is the same as I've done in previous videos when I mapped my Zigbee stick and my Google Coral TPU, and all the instructions are in the blog post. What we're going to do is copy the command out of the blog post and open a new SSH session to the computer that we're running Docker on. We'll then paste in the command which lists all of the USB devices connected to our host machine. Here you can see both my Z-Wave controller and my Zigbee USB coordinator listed. You should copy out the big long text that is a controller reference and paste it over the top of the placeholder text that's in the sample configuration file like this. Finally, we need to tell the container where to store its configuration data. I keep all of my container configuration under my slash opt directory, so I change the path under the volume section to map the data to the slash opt slash zwave directory. This will be automatically created when the container starts up. Save the file and go back to your SSH session, and now run the docker compose up hyphen d command which will download all of the required files and create the Z-Wave JS to MQTT container. If we now switch over to our Portana instance, you can see the newly created container. And if we click into it, you can see that it's running and we can check out the log files to make sure that it started correctly. The container will start a web interface as well that can be used to configure it. And it generally runs on port 8091. So if you navigate to the IP address of your host and that port, you should see the interface load up. We don't generally need to do much in here, but you will need to enable the WebSocket server the first time that you load it up so that Home Assistant can talk to it. To do that, click on the settings cog in the left hand menu and scroll down to the Home Assistant section. Enable the WS server and leave everything else as default. You can now save that information and you should be good to go. Now that we've got the Z-Wave JS container up and running, we need to install the Home Assistant integration again. This is almost exactly the same process as I showed you before with the add-on method. Go to the settings section in Home Assistant, go to the integrations page, and add a new integration. Once again, search for Z-Wave JS, and this is where it gets slightly different. Instead of it detecting the add-on, you'll be asked to tell Home Assistant where to find the Z-Wave JS server. As mine is running on the same host as Home Assistant, I keep the default here and tell it to look on my local host with the default port set. Click finish and the add-on will be in the list. You can once again click configure and it should look exactly the same as the other installation method. And that's it. You've once again got your Z-Wave network set up and running and you're ready to add devices. Adding devices works exactly the same no matter which installation method you're using. The first thing you need to do is put the network into inclusion mode which tells the Z-Wave USB controller to allow new devices to join the network. You can do that by clicking the Add Device button on the Z-Wave JS integration page. You can now pair your Z-Wave device with the network. This is usually done by clicking a button or something on the device itself. It should tell you how to do it in the instructions. Once the device has been added, you should be able to see it in Home Assistant like any other device. I've paired a smart switch that can be turned on and off, but it also measures the power being consumed by the device that's plugged into it. I usually now give the device a sensible name and add it to the right area. All the sensors and controls and other usual things you expect to see in Home Assistant should be visible here now. I'm going to quickly add another device by following the same process. In this case, a 6-in-1 multi-sensor that measures temperature, humidity, presence and light levels. So now you've got Z-Wave JS up and running with Home Assistant and you've paired a couple of devices. It's now time to create an automation that uses them. As an example, we're going to create a simple automation that turns on the Z-Wave switch when the 6-in-1 sensor detects motion. You could just as easily turn on a Zigbee switch or a Wi-Fi light bulb instead. Home Assistant lets you mix and match your devices no matter what type they are or which manufacturer made them. We can trigger this automation using a state trigger. Search for the motion sensor entity, just like any other Home Assistant entity, and make it trigger when the value goes from off to on. That means it's detected motion. In the action area, we can add an action to call a service, in this case the switch turn on service, and choose the Z-Wave smart switch as the target entity. There you go. That's how you set up Home Assistant to use Z-Wave devices with a USB dongle and Z-Wave JS. Not too hard, is it? If you found this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up below, as that really helps me out. And whilst you're down there, why not subscribe to the channel? I regularly release videos about Home Assistant and smart homes in general, and if you subscribe you'll see when I've released a new one, and then together we can make your home smarter.